Seven children at Wilson Children's Hospital have died from COVID-19 since the beginning of the pandemic. Four of them since the latest surge of the Delta variant started at the end of June. The victims range in age from infants to teenagers. Joining me now is the medical director of the Pediatric Intensive Care Unit at Wolfson Children's Hospital, Dr. Thomas Nakagawa. Good morning, thanks for joining us. Good morning, how are you? Doctor, would you describe what you have seen the last two months when it comes to pediatric children infected with COVID? We have seen really a uh, significant increase in number, numbers of children of all ages, from newborns to adolescents up to 18 years of age being admitted with COVID. And this has really <clears throat> um, included healthy children, uh, children with underlying medical conditions. Uh, and we expect to continue to see increased numbers of children with COVID because uh, school is back in session. Um, everything that we're seeing is really consistent with the study that will be released today from the Center for Disease Control, talking about increased hospitalizations in communities where vaccination rates are lower. Uh, there's a second study that really talks about emergency room visits and hospitalizations that are lower in uh, children in communities where vaccination rates are higher. So uh, we are seeing uh, a, a significant number of children uh, who are mild ill, but um, also uh, a group that is severely ill that ends up in the intensive care unit. And do you attribute what you're seeing in the PICU as of late to the fact that there are just not enough people in our community who are vaccinated and as a result, they are giving this virus to children too young to be vaccinated? Um, I think that's a big part of it. Um, and I think that um, as uh, society has opened up again, I think it's important for us to remember that, that we do have to um, think about protective measures, um, things like hand washing, masks, uh, vaccinations, uh, all those things play into the importance of reducing disease processes. And it's not just with COVID, it's with any infectious disease process that we deal with. Um, that's why transmission rates are extremely low in the hospital because we do a lot of hand washing. Uh, we wear masks. Uh, we uh, have uh, protective, personal protective equipment that we utilize on a daily basis. Doctor, would you describe, because of your experience in the PICU, what a child who needs the resources of the PICU is going through? Can you paint a picture for us of what, it, what this child looks like? Well, I. I, there, there's a whole spectrum that you'll see. There are children that present to the hospital with very mild dis disease um, and they do get better. And then there are children that present to the hospital with COVID and their condition progresses and they get sicker. Uh, some of these kids will actually develop uh, COVID pneumonia. Uh, COVID typically affects the lungs. It results in breathing difficulties. Uh, these breathing difficulties can result in lack of oxygen. Uh, to the rest of the body resulting in organs being starved for oxygen. Uh, many of these children require supplemental oxygen and other forms of advanced oxygen therapy uh, to help them breathe. Some patients have deteriorated even further and end up on the ventilator. And in some severe cases, uh, we've had children uh, on heart-lung machines uh, in an effort to support them. And those are obviously the most severely ill children that, uh, that we see. Are there long-term effects to that treatment and then also COVID? There are long-term effects uh, to COVID. As far as the treatment, uh, the treatment is really designed to support the patient, in this case, the child. It could be an adult too, uh, but support the patient until their body can actually heal from the disease process. The long-term effects that we're actually seeing from COVID are what we call long COVID. And that can result in residual damage to the lungs that can result in uh, breathing difficulties. There can be altered brain function, which is what people have termed brain fog. There can be continued uh, loss of taste and smell. There can be um, continued inflammation of the heart, which can also be long lasting. Um, and, and that's an important point because Children who get COVID were seeing a syndrome, it's a post-infectious syndrome after the COVID infection has resolved. And it's called the multi-inflammatory syndrome in children. Um, and that typically manifests itself uh, somewhere between three and four weeks after uh, 
an acute COVID infection. Um, and those kids can actually get very, very sick. They present with heart failure. They, uh, because of inflammation of the heart, uh, they can have gastrointestinal problems. They can have uh, rashes. Um, and uh, again, we do see those kids. We've seen a significant number of those children at Wilson Children's Hospital. Doctor, thank you for your perspective. We've not had that yet here on The Morning Show. I really appreciate it. And the thought that as, as a parent of two children, uh, to imagine my child in the PICU with tubes and on a ventilator just makes me just, my heart ache for any children who are going through that. And we know that you have at least four right now. Thank you for your time this morning. Thank you.